everybody. It's Al with Bobcat. So today I wanted to pick up a topic about milling a, a shoulder and some of the different methods that you can use to generate a toolpath to put this feature into your part. Uh, as usual, you'll go ahead and set up your uh, stock wizard, uh, set up the stock, pick your origin uh, so that you're ready to, to get started. Now, when it comes to this this shoulder here this you know you can see how there's this cutaway uh, there's a number of different ways that you can do it you can do it with uh, profiling and side roughing uh, you can do it with uh, pocketing um, you know and, and so there's some different options and a little different workflow depending on what you want to accomplish so let's look at uh, let's look at profiling first and uh, some of the ways in which you can profile this. So we're gonna go to our mill to axis and we're gonna select this edge right here. Uh, from there, we're gonna pick it again to set our depth. Uh, now we're gonna, we're under profiling. We have a rough and finish, so that's great. Um, I have a post selected, uh, that was a warning that the post that I had uh, selected wasn't in there. I'm going to define my tool, I'm just typing in the diameter, but you can load it from the tool crib or, or the library, whatever works best for you. Uh, for the rough routine, I'm going to do side roughing. I'm going to set the amount of material that is left, and then uh, I can determine what my step over amount is. So. Uh, you can eat if you give it three or whatever number of passes it's going to divide the stock remaining uh, for the increment of cut or what you can say is you know I want to take 125 a pass divided by uh, the amount of stock left over or I'm sorry uh, 0.75 divided by 125 you know and that will give us how many passes that's that's basically what's going on in the background okay so We've set our stock remaining, our number of passes. The next thing that we might want to do is adjust our lead-in. Uh, I'm going to do a, a circular lead-in. User define. Um, you got a couple of different options here. Let's go with uh, let's go with uh, tangent. We'll set our value. We'll set our radius. Um, we're gonna set this to 45 because what I want to do is I want to get the tool to roll in. That's the the best on the cutter is to get the tool to roll in. Uh, and then when it comes out on the other side, I just want it to go out straight. Uh, after which we'll run a finish pass, and then we'll just do tangent uh, lead in and and lead out. That's fine. We'll go ahead and compute this, and uh, here we can see the the tool path that's generated. So. What's happening is the tool is starting off the part, it's going to roll in, it's going to run back, and then it goes back and repeats and repeats. Uh, let's run it through a simulation real quick so we can see what's going on. Slow it down, uh, zoom in a little bit, and let's get to this orientation over here. So we can see that it's just going to roll in and then it's going to come back. So profiling, this is this is one way in which we could uh, mill the shoulder here. If you have a larger cutter, you could take it in one pass. Uh, if you're using a smaller cutter, you can set the number of passes and how much material you want it to take. Okay. So uh, the next thing that we want to look at is doing some pocketing, right? So let's uh, blank this out. I'm going to create a new layer. Now you can use surface edges. Uh, for pocketing, uh, but because it's it's going to be an open pocket, we're going to need to uh, convert it to wireframe. The reason why we're converting it to wireframe is so that we can change uh, we can change the um, we can change the profile to represent the edge of the stock. And really, the way you know by default you would think, hey, you know, I just come in here. Let's get rid of this circle in the center. Let me change the color of this too. Uh, you know, hey, I just turned this into a dotted line. So I can select this. 
modify attributes, line, style, dotted line, you know, and now the tool knows to start off that shape. The problem is, is that's really, the dotted line is representing the edge of the stock, so the tool would have clearance to come down, okay? Um, the tool will also go past that edge by, you know, half the cutter. Um, let me go ahead and let's just set up the pocket routine. So we'll do two axis. We'll uh, select our geometry. We can set our depth. Pocketing. All right. So this is going to be quarter inch. We're going to do an advanced pocket. And then uh, finish pass is quarter inch. Uh, and we'll do our tangent lead in and out. That's fine. Okay. So now, this is, this is the toolpath that we're getting. So you can see it, it's coming back and it's coming back. And then, you know, what it does is, uh, you know, it's rolling over the edges, you know, as, as it's clearing this material. Again, the dotted line is supposed to represent the edge of the stock. So what you may do is adjust that profile. And you would also, and again, this is the reason why you went to wireframe is so that you can say which parts are open, okay? And, Defining uh, the geometry as uh, dotted uh, it represents that that's the open area. So let's go ahead and blank this out. And what we can do instead, I'm going to do, uh, let me see here. I'm going to adjust my UCS. This geometry, if I measure this, you can see that it's at uh, this, uh, this value right here. This is at a quarter inch, right? or I'm sorry, an eighth inch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, add a new UCS. I'm going to move it, and I'm just going to move it up a quarter inch. And essentially what that's doing is just let me draw on the same plane that this geometry is at. And then uh, from here, I'm going to do, I mean, there's a couple of different ways. I'm just going to trim screen. So I'm going to trim this one out so it's past the edge of the part. And then I'm going to trim this one so it's out past, past the edge of the part as well. Now, you know, I want to make sure that it's at least the radius out, but I'm just guessing from here. Uh, from there, I'm going to do line continuous sketch vertical, and I'm just going to grab that edge there. And then uh, I'll do sketch horizontal. I'm just sketch something up here, and I'll do sketch vertical again, and I'm just going to sketch something up here. Okay, so basically I'm boxing in the shape. I'm going to come around and trim this up. So I'm going to say from here to here, to here, to here, to here, you know, and now I'm going to pick this edge and this edge. And those are the two edges that I'm going to turn into uh, dotted lines saying that those two edges are open. Okay. I'm going to go back to my top view now. All right. So now I have the geometry set up. I'm just going to remove, reselect. I'm going to select the profile there and then I'm going to go ahead and compute it. So now you can see the difference of how the toolpath is generated. Um, again, the value here is, you know, making sure that it starts off the edge of the stock and then it's working its way over. You can see there's some pretty abrupt moves here. If you wanted to change that, you could always go back into your uh, pattern and then utilize the adaptive roughing. Uh, what that will do is uh, smooth out the profile so you can see now it's uh, done with more uh, circular motion. Uh, the other thing that you might want to do as well is instead of a th uh, three-sided uh, or two-sided open pocket, you may close this one off here. Again, you want to make sure that your boundary accommodates for the cutter, but now we can do a two-sided or I'm sorry, a one-sided open pocket. We can select this shape here, compute it, you know, now you can see that it's going to come over in, in that fashion. Again, you want to make sure that this edge is uh, further than uh, half the tool. So you clear this side of the part. And then um, also, so this edge is past the edge of the part. So you're clearing that side of the part. So, you know, again, you can use uh, open pocketing. You can use profiling. Uh, it's going to depend on your machine and the cutters that you have available. Uh, but hopefully that will uh, give you a little more insight on how to handle machining a shoulder in Bobcat and different approaches that you could take. Uh, if there's any questions, comments, uh, user feedback, uh, please feel free to comment at the Facebook, the YouTube. Um, uh, Facebook or YouTube page. Also, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube page, definitely do that now. And uh, otherwise, we'll catch you in the next video. Thank you so much.